Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing fine. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how to crack the DNB theory exam at one go. I'm happy to share that I have cleared both my theory and practical DNB exams at the very first attempt with flying colors. So I thought why not share my experience of how to go about the exam and how to prepare so that you can also give your best shot and clear your exams at the very first go using these tips. So this video will be coming in two parts. This is a part one where I will be talking mainly about the theory exams where I'll be talking about the resources to be used, how you can go about writing the answers, important chapters from Harrison and what are the paper device distribution you can expect in the exams. Part 2 which will be coming, I'll be talking mainly about the OSCEs, how to prepare for the long cases, how to prepare for the short cases and so on. That will be part 2 which will be coming very soon. So this video in particular will be helpful for the exam goers who are going to appear for the theory exam this month and also for the future experience who are currently in the second year or the first year. So before we start with the video, hi, I am Dr. Nishant. I am a senior resident in the Department of General Medicine at Apollo Hospitals. If you are new to my channel, please make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss on such videos in future. So there's always been a talk about the DNB exams being tough and the pass percentage being low and too much stress about the exams, whether we'll pass at one attempt or not. But believe me, I have given my exams just six months back. I have cleared at the very first attempt and what it requires is a dedicated and a smart approach which I will be talking here and you can also get a good marks if you structure your answers well which we will be talking more in the videos. So first of all the resources for the DNB theory exam which is very important so where you are going to prepare from. So the main textbook the standard textbook is the Harrison. Besides that there are few more textbooks which you should have which can enhance your preparation and help you grab the topic better. Among them few are the API textbook of medicine. Remember the API medicine update and the API textbook of medicine are two different textbooks. The purple one is the API textbook of medicine, whichever is the latest edition, you can check it out. Then the API medicine update, which has come out this time is 2025. And then there is another very good book, which is Saha's manual for postgraduate medicine. That is basically a question and answer type of format of book where they have arranged the topics in a question answer formats. They have mostly taken the text from the Harrison itself. So the authenticity you should not be worried about. For example, topic of GI bleed, they have beautifully arranged the answer as very still bleed, non very still bleed upper GI bleed, lower GI bleed and they have also then mentioned about the management of variceal bleed separately, non variceal bleed separately and the way they have written it becomes very easy to construct your answers around it rather than going to the paragraphs of Harrison which is always difficult and cumbersome for uh, all of us throughout our preparation. So if you are in first year or second year, you should not leave Harrison, you should go through Harrison and try to take out the salient points from the topics and also try to frame your own notes. And uh, what is the most important part from Harrison is the tables to try to focus on the tables because generally they summarize everything in the table, whether it is the investigations or the management or the classifications or if there is any algorithm is there. So that is very nicely given in Harrison. But besides that, the entire text sometimes is difficult to go through that and even make notes from that. Then such books like Saha's textbook and API textbook come into picture. So there are few chapters which you should not read from Harrison. For example, mainly the infectious diseases of India like the dengue, malaria, tuberculosis, HIV, these are better given in the API textbook rather than Harrison. You can read Harrison once, but the questions which are asked in the exams are very well given in the API textbook. Besides these resources, the DNB question papers are important. I would say five years are enough because uh, the pattern has changed now and they are not asking the pattern which they used to ask 10 years back. So I think five to six years are enough because mostly if you see the questions which are coming are mostly repeating and they are mostly from the same topics but the pattern of question may be different. For example, if they are asking about tuberculosis, they are asking every year about tuberculosis but sometimes they are asking the management of MDRTB, sometimes they are asking XDRTB, sometimes they are asking the diagnostics, sometimes they are asking about spine TB or uh, extra pulmonary TB and so on. So the overall topic remains the same, the chapter remains the same but the pattern of question keeps on changing. So if you know what questions are being asked or if you have cracked the 5 to 6 years papers, then you almost thorough what to read, what not to read and the chances of passing the exam increases. Anyway, I will be discussing the important chapters from Harrison which I have curated for you all from where the maximum questions have come in the past so that it becomes easier for you to first do a targeted preparation and then move forward. And lastly, I have included Mero in this because I used Mero platform as a preparation source because many topics which I couldn't understand or where the concepts were lacking, I used to directly go to the Mero app and watch the video from the topic and have the concept and then make my own notes or even you can go through their notes because they have PDFs in their app. But that is up to you if you are not having any platform or you are following speed or any other app that will also do. 
but these are the few textbooks which i would definitely recommend having by your side and if once you enter third year api textbook you should start reading there are few chapters which are very well given in api textbooks for example endocrine as a whole is given very nicely the dis electrolytemia part the infectious disease part is best given in the api textbook and so on uh, and also the updates updates generally come every year the updates are generally released around 6 months within your exam so this time it came around january february so people started ordering around march so what is the beauty about updates is that it is written by association of physicians of india that means these are physicians who are conducting the conferences all over india these are the physicians who are involved in the question paper setting of the uh, dnb exams these are the physicians who will be taking your practical exams as well all over india so they are mostly writing the chapter and they are writing it very beautifully so i highly recommend going through the updates once you have gone through the own notes or through the harrison or whichever resource you have used for example the chapter of syncope uh, which is given in the harrison but if you go through the same chapter from updates they have given it very beautifully and you can frame your answers very nicely around those things similarly for irritable bowel syndrome and there are various chapters for example the nmo or the mogad diseases or the stroke chapter and the list is endless there are so many chapters which are given very nicely in the updates so summarizing how to go about it first read harrison in the first year first grab the cardinal manifestations from volume 1 try to read the topics and the tables if possible of any topic then make notes from saha textbook whichever topic is given you can also use the api textbook the main textbook the purple one to frame your own notes in the video further i'll tell you how you can structure your answer while making your notes because short hand notes will be helpful for you while you are preparing and also you won't be having much time in the exam to write a lot of things so it is very important while you prepare you prepare in a smart way and your answer should be well constructed lastly just 6 months before the exam when the api update come go through the important chapters which you already have studied and the important updates or the important new chapters which have come you can just give a small short read you don't have to go in entire detail so that you have an idea of what are the new tr- newer trends or what are the newer topics which are there so that is all about the resources these are the few resources and the very most important resources which i used and this is how you can use during a preparation and get the best out of it so having discussed the resources now it's very important what are the important chapters for harrison these are the most important chapters from the harrison from where you can expect at least one question every year so dnb is conducting exams twice a year uh, in six months interval and so there is two papers in one year so i went through last 6 to 7 years paper it is about uh, 12 to 14 papers and these are the most important chapters which i found that the topics were repeating again and again these chapters you cannot miss if you have covered these chapters the chances of clearing the exam is very high so these are the important chapters from harrison if you see the cardinal manifestations the puo syncope hemoptysis gi bleed and so on for the hematology and oncology it's anemia oncologic emergencies iron deficiencies for infections pneumonia uti meningitis for cardiovascular it's heart failure ischemic heart disease hypertension and so on for the renal part it is the aki glomerular diseases for git it is ibd nafld cirrhosis and so on so this is a long list of chapter which i have already made and from these chapters at least every year or so questions are coming and repeating i will be attaching the pdf link in the description below you can download it it's difficult to go through each topic and it will be very boring these chapters you should be covered thoroughly so that the chances of passing the exam becomes very high besides this i would like to say few more things for cardinal manifestation the best book to study is harrison for hematology oncology part you can go through the saha textbook it's good and for infections as i already said the best book to study is api textbook for cardiovascular part i uh, referred to mero notes and saha's textbooks i use both side by side and few things i studied from the api update so that is the thing then for respiratory again saha's textbook and harrison was also good and for the septic shock directly i read through the septic guidelines for the renal part saha textbook was equally good uh, for the git part i did from mero as well as uh, i did from the api textbook for rheumatology the sle rheumatoid arthritis everything it's given very nicely in the api textbook for endocrinology as i already said i uh, studied in detail from api textbook 
and the neurology I studied from Harrison, I studied from Saha's textbook and I also went through few things from the Marrow app and at the end wherever some things were missing I tried to correlate with the API updates and made my notes in that way. For poisoning, snake bites, the best book to study is API textbook and for the last chapters from the Harrison that is the frontiers that you have to go through Harrison only in short. Now a very important part to discuss is how to write a theory answer. So this is very important because your exams will be about 180 minutes. You will be having 4 days back to back exams and you will be having 10 questions, 10 marks each that is about 100 marks. So 100 marks, 4 days, 400 marks, you have to get 200. That means you have 18 minutes for each question, 180 minutes for 10 questions. Sometimes they may ask you 10 marks question directly or sometimes they may give 2 5 marks questions in one question. So your answer should be very structured and you have very limited time. You have 18 minutes for each question and also in DNB exams you are not getting extra pages. There is a small booklet of 50 pages, 5 pages for each question. So for example, if you are getting a 10 marks question, you have just 5 pages to write. If you are having 2 questions of 5 marks each in one question, you have 2.5 pages about for each answer to write. So you have to be very structured, you have to write it very well and make it very easy for the examiner to give you marks. I will just give you a sample of how you can go about it. So you have to maintain an introduction, you have to give a content, you have to write a conclusion, you can include diagrams and flowcharts wherever possible, you can answer in bullet points but to the point answering is very important. For example, if they are asking you treatment of MDR-TB and you are writing diagnostics of MDR-TB then that will not do. So for example, in our time they asked diagnostics of TB and if I am writing the treatment of XDR-TB or if I am writing the clinical features of TB which is not being asked. It is just unnecessary including points and filling the answer sheets but DNB examiners are very strict about this, they will not give you marks. Of course, if you do not know anything about the topic and then you want to write something that is okay but if you are being asked something in particular then you have to write that thing only. But if you are giving a whole umbrella topic, for example, a short note comes on atrial fibrillation or a short note comes on hypomagnesemia, then you have to structure your answer right from introduction till conclusion. So, I will just show you under what headings you can write an answer which makes it very beautiful. For example, I am writing an answer for uh, atrial fibrillation. So, the introduction I just have to give a definition of what atrial fibrillation is. Then I will write about the etiology of the risk factors, for example, hypertension, COPD, OSA and uh, respiratory lung diseases, old age, alcohol, etc. Then comes the clinical features of so what the patient will come with and what you will find in your examination. These are the clinical features which you should write. Then comes the investigations which can be as blood investigations, radiological investigations, any imaging, ECG, ECO or any other body fluids which can be CSF or which can be urine examination or anything else. So, for uh, example, in uh, atrial fibrillation, the main diagnosis is the ECG diagnosis and a 24 hour holter and you can also do a echo to check for the sizes and there, these are the main investigation which you have to write. Then you can add additional investigations for like LFT and other things which you will write which you might need to assess whether the whether to start anticoagulation in the patient or not. So that is the secondary thing but you can write definitely. Then comes the algorithm. So for example, in AF we know there is an algorithm whether the patient is hemodynamically stable or unstable, so whether the patient has come within 48 hours or after 48 hours what you can do or not. So these are various algorithms which is available in AF. Similarly for any topic, if there is an algorithm and the question is a broad ended question, you can definitely put the algorithm in a flow chart manner it will be better. Then comes the treatment. So always you try to write the treatment in this way if it is possible for that topic like uh, management in emergency or in ICU setup, then management as after the patient is stabilized and the way you will discharge the patient. For example, in AF first you will try to cardiovert the patient or you try to control the rate. Then you try to manage once the patient is stable, then you decide to put the patient on anticoagulation and discharge in a similar way. Other treatments also you can include. First the medical management once is done, you can include the surgical management if it is present. For example, nowadays for atrial fibrillation there are managements like pulse field ablation and so on and prevention if any, for example, infectious disease you can use preventions like you can give chemo prophylaxis, you can give vaccination and so on. So depending on your topic, whichever question is there, you can frame your answer in this way which makes it very easy for the examiner to give you marks, give you step marking. If it is a 10 mark question, they can give you 2 marks, 2 marks, 1 mark and so on and give you a very nice mark from 10 out of 10, they can give you around 8 or 7, they are giving. 
So if you write it this way, it becomes very easy. And uh, lastly, you can include prognosis and follow up and complication if it is possible. So this is the way to write any answer. Most of the topics you can write in this way. But for example, if you are being asked uh, about an anatomy or a physiology or a basic science question, then including a diagram is very must and the topics of writing that answer will change and the subheadings will change. And if you are writing about pharmacology question, for example, they are asking you about PCSK9 inhibitors or they are asking you about a beta blocker question or they are asking you anything about a pharmacology drugs, then the pattern of writing an answer changes. Uh, you have to include introduction, mechanism action, then if it is a drug, then you have to include the route which you will be giving, the dose you will be giving, the interval you will be using, then comes the indications, contraindications and adverse effects and so on. So if you can write any answer, any topic in a format where you can include subheadings, it becomes very easy for the examiner to give you marks and your chances of passing becomes very high. Also in this way you are saving time and you can think better and you can also remember better. These are the benefits of creating your answer in this fashion. I would also suggest if you are in second year or first year and if you are making your own notes, try to make notes around these subheadings only. It becomes very easy to revise and to remember. Lastly, the paper-wise distribution for the theory exam. So this has been given on the official website. But to be honest, most of the things are not followed. I have seen over 3-4 years and even my own experience of the exam, these were not followed. So two things which were followed was paper 1 and paper 2, you can expect some basic sciences questions like the anatomy, the physiology and so on. And paper 4, generally they ask updates. Besides that, the system wise distribution is not fixed. They can ask you cardiology in paper 1, they can ask you cardiology in paper 4, they can give endocrine in paper 1, they can give endocrine in paper 1, 2, 3, in every paper you can give. So there is no fixed system wise distribution in the papers. This you have to believe me. But yes, you can expect basic sciences questions in paper 1 and 2 and you can expect the updates questions, the latest updates for example, tirzapatide is the new drug which is coming. So they can ask that in updates. So that you can expect in paper 4 but otherwise there is no specific trend which they follow and you have to be thorough and you have to rely on your knowledge and uh, preparation and you have to have confidence that whatever topic comes you will be able to write. And for the basic sciences the very common topics which they ask like you do not have to go in in-depth preparation of anatomy or physiology but uh, basic anatomy for example of important topics like circle of willis for stroke, then uh, blood supply of heart, then the diagram of nephron, superior vena cava, inferior vena cava and so on. These are important anatomy structures. For carpal tunnel, they can ask the median nerve distribution and so on. And for physiology, the importance like cardiac cycle is important, then renal physiology is important, endocrine physiology is important. For example, they can ask you the feedback mechanisms and so on. So that way you have to prepare. And for other basic sciences like the pathology and the microbiology part, they can ask you the trends of ANA tests. They can ask you about diagnostics in tuberculosis and so on. So that will be covered mostly in the primary topic itself. For preparation of these basic sciences, I would suggest a YouTube channel called Ninja Nerd. You must have heard. It is very good describing the anatomy in a very cool and a very uh, concise manner. You can go and check out the important uh, topics which you want to go through for anatomy and basic sciences from his channel. For cardinal manifestation, there is another good channel called Medi Lectures in, on YouTube. I have used his videos and it was very helpful for me. The way he has dealt with the topics for directly from Harrison is very beneficial. So that is all about how you can prepare for the theory exams and how you should go about it. I have tried to include everything in detail, the way I started my preparation, the resources I used, how you should write about an answer, how you should prepare your own notes, how you should frame the answer. Then lastly, the much hype about the paperwork distribution which is always there. But it is not followed, so I have cleared the doubt there also. So for the candidates who are going to appear in the next 10 days, I wish you all the best for this exam and I want you to share it with your friends who are going to appear for these exams. And for the other specialty like the surgery, pediatrics etc, I would highly suggest you talk to your seniors and get an idea about how to go about the preparation. I hope this video is useful. Stay tuned for part 2 where I will be talking about the practical part and how you can approach the practical exams, the OSCEs, then the long cases and short cases. I hope you make the most out of this video. Lastly, if you have any doubts, you can mention in the comment section below or you can DM me directly on my Instagram profile at Aspiring Endocrinologist. I will be happy to reply and help you out with it. And please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. 
Till then, take care, bye-bye and happy study.